إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهد هد نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الله the Almighty says in the Quran والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر which translates to by time indeed mankind is in loss except for those who have believed and done righteous deeds and advised each other to truth and advised each other to patience servants of Allah in this glorious surah, which Al Imam al Shafi'i said, may Allah have mercy on his soul, if Allah only revealed this surah to mankind, it would have sufficed them. It would take, take, it would take us ages to go through the pearls and gems of this surah. Nevertheless, Allah swears and no one compels Allah to swear because we know Allah says only the truth Allah makes an oath by time that mankind is at loss all mankind is at loss except for those who believe those who do righteous deeds, those who advise one another to truth and those who advise one another to be patient while doing good deeds, to be patient while refraining from sin, to be patient to whatever calamities befall upon them as it was predestined by Allah Azza wa Jal. The concept of loss and winning has a great deficiency and confusion among us Muslims. Simply because our measuring stick, the way we weigh things, our standards are way different than what it is supposed to be. If we look into the Qur'an and to the Sunnah, we will see the whole world differently. We will find that the definition of winning and losing is totally different than what we have in mind. How does Allah define to us the concept of winning and losing? Listen to this 
particular ayah in the Quran. The Quran was not revealed for barakah only, to be put in a glove compartment in your car to protect you from accidents. The Quran is not a form of decoration you hang on your walls. The Quran is not what many people think of it. It is a book of guidance. Each and every word in it should add value, should be a life changer if you are a proper Muslim. Listen to this particular ayah. Allah says in the Quran, everyone shall taste death. And only on the day of resurrection shall you be paid your wages in full. And whoever is removed away from the fire and admitted to paradise, he indeed is successful. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازِ He's a winner. He's the one who has succeeded. This is how Allah defines winning to us in the Quran. This is your main prerogative. This is your main objective as a Muslim living on earth for a limited period of time. What is your objective? To build a house? To get married? To have children? Your objective is to reach Jannah. This is your mission. And if you have any other missions, then you have failed. The vast majority of us work, live, and exist as if there is no Jannah, as if there is no hellfire. We only live for this dunya, as if we are immortal, as if we are going to live forever. Suhaib so, al-Rumi, one of the great companions of the Prophet ﷺ, who used to live in Mecca, when he wanted to migrate to Medina, the idol worshippers prevented him and intercepted his way. So now he's in the middle of his journey to Medina. They said, you came to us poor. You're an expat. And now you've gained so much money because you were a good businessman. We can't allow you to leave with this money. So he threw his arrows on the ground. And he said, by Allah, you, knew, you know that I'm a good archer. I will put an arrow in each person of you until they're over. And then I will fight you with my sword till my last breath. And that would cause a lot of fatality among you. I'm a single man. But if you want, I'll bargain with you. I'll tell you where my fortune is kept. Take it. But let me be on my way to Medina. They weighed the pros and cons and said, we'll take the money. So he told them where his money, money was stashed. And when he reached Medina, penniless, no fortune, he wasted 20 years of his life in Mecca, gaining money. He's an expat. This is why he came to this country. Yet he did not have any remorse because his target, because his definition of winning was different. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ confirmed to him. When he saw him, he said, Rabbi halbay' Aba Yahya, Rabbi halbay'. The first thing the Prophet said, ﷺ, your transaction was successful. Your mission was accomplished. You did the right thing. This is how they understood the difference between winning and losing. And this is what you should ask yourself. If you were given the choice between this dunya and the hereafter, which one would you choose? The winners would abandon dunya. And he said, no, I don't want haram. I don't want things that would take me to hell. I want al-akhirah. I want Allah's pleasure. This is what I live for, and this is what I shall die for. The vast majority of the Muslims are ignorant. They 
are envious of the billionaires because they see that winning is to hoard, is to collect, is to gather wealth, whether halal or haram, irrespective, it doesn't matter. This is what they think winning is. So you tell me, a billionaire who gathered his wealth from haram, a billionaire who will be asked on the day of judgment for every filth, where did he get it from? And where did he spend it in? He will be questioned about it. Is he a winner or a loser? You tell me, a person who skips salat with the congregation in the masjid so that he would watch a football match or that he would not miss an Oscar winning movie. Is he a winner or is he a loser? A man whose income is through riba, interest, is through bribing, giving and receiving, is through consumption of haram means. You tell me, is he a winner or a loser? For us who pray in the masjid, this is an eye opener. We sure, surely would say he's a loser. For those who don't pray with us, we, who look at the car that's fancy or at the mansion that he's living in, they think that he is a winner. A sinful woman who does not abide by the hijab, who wears makeup, who wears tight clothes, as we see in the malls and in the streets, people are shocked, Muslims are shocked when they see someone who's hijabi. I'm shocked, I just came yesterday. To see someone covering the hair, mashallah, but wearing tights and wearing revealing clothes and full makeup. What a fashionista they call, mashallah, tabarakallah. Is this Islam? So is this woman a, win a winner or a loser? Taking off your clothes is the easiest thing, guys. Any woman can take off her hijab and adorn herself to look beautiful to others. Only winners can wear black from head to toe and conceal their beauty and accept the fact that they're modest, chaste, and God-fearing. And this is why Allah says in the Quran, opening our eyes again, a believing slave woman is better than a polytheist, even though she might please you. Now, this concept of winning and losing is what the companions lived by. It's not something we say. It's something that you live by and stick to. If you ask the Muslims, Haram ibn Malhan, anybody who knows him, the vast majority of them have no idea. Haram ibn Malhan was the brother of Umm Sulaim, meaning that he was the maternal uncle of Anas ibn Malik. Whoa, so he's a really high-ranked companion. He was sent among 70 of the companions to the center of Arabia to give da'wah to the idol worshiper tribes, tribes. And as he was giving a presentation to one of the tribe leader, this polytheist hinted to one of his soldiers to assassinate this da'i. The guy is a peaceful person just telling him about tawheed out of betrayal, though they were the one who invited them to give them da'wah. This soldier came from behind Haram ibn Malhan with his spear, stabbed him from the back like any coward, having that penetrating his chest, causing his death. Now you tell me, if you were in his shoes, what would you have done? Haram ibn Malhan, the moment he felt the stab penetrating his chest, said, Fuzdu wa Rabbi al-Ka'bah. 
I have won by the Lord of the Kaaba. By Allah, I have won. He did not remember his wife and children. He did not remember the wealth he had left behind. He did not regret a house he did not build. He did not have remorse over war booties that he could not gain because he left his home with a sole purpose, and that is to win. And martyrdom was presented to him. What more does he want? The moment of death, you see your life in front of you. These people had one objective, and that is to win. And he attained what he came for. What about our youngsters, the youth? Today, their trophy, the concept of winning, is to win the heart of a beautiful, rich babe, is to ride a fancy sports car, is to gain money, or the most modest of them all is to get one month vacation in Europe where he's unwatched, uncontrolled, and unleashed. This is the concept of winning to him. Those who follow the Quran, the Sunnah, those who put their souls on the palm of their hands, their concept of winning is, how many souls have I claimed on the battlefield in the cause of Allah in jihad? How many days have I fasted for the sake of Allah when people were eating and drinking? How many rak'ah have I offered in the middle of the night while people were asleep? How many juz of the Quran have I memorized and revised and I have Allah's words in my heart? How many prayers have I managed to succeed in offering in the first row in the masjid? And Allah says in the Quran, أَفَمَنْ كَانَ مُؤْمِنًا كَمَنْ كَانَ فَاسِقًا لَا يَسْتَوُونَ Then is one who was a believer, like one who was defiantly disobedient, they are not equal. I hear what, I say what you hear, and I seek Allah's forgiveness. أَقُولُ هَذَا الْقَوْلُ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ اللهم اغفر ورحم الله يا رب اختمنا الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه أجمعين إن سنن أبي داود أسلم one of the tabi'een says we were in an expedition and we were besieging Kostanobul قسطنطينية in Turkey and the Byzantines were having their backs to the walls facing us. So they had nowhere to go. And we were at war. All of a sudden, one of the Muslims barged alone to attack the enemy lines. The other Muslims said, whoa, whoa, he's throwing himself in harm's way. He's throwing himself into destruction with his own hands. Among us was Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, may Allah be pleased with him. One of the great companions of the Prophet ﷺ. He was over 80 years of age and he was blind. What is he doing in jihad? He just wanted to die with the Muslims and give them momentum and give them a number. He wasn't gonna fight, but he was with them. So when he heard what they said, he said, no, 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 no. 
He's not throwing himself into destruction with his own hands because this ayah was revealed upon us, the people of Al-Ansar, the people of Medina. When we saw that victory was at the side of the Prophet ﷺ, and he was victorious over all Arabia, we communicated with one another, the people of Medina, and said, okay, Islam has prevailed. Why don't we go back to our wealth, our farms, and fix it, and try to make it as flourishing as it, as it used to be? So Allah revealed in the Quran, and spend in the way of Allah, and do not throw yourselves with your own hands into destruction by refraining. So Abu Ayyub says, throwing our, ourselves in destruction with our own hands meant that we fix our farms and leave jihad. This is throwing ourselves into destruction. Aslam says, Abu Imran, Abu Ayyub continued to struggle in the, uh, uh, side of, uh, in the side of Allah in jihad until he was buried near Constantinople. He did not fight, but he was with them so that he would be with the people who are doing jihad. This tafsir of the ayah, throwing yourself into destruction, was the tafsir of the sahabi, of a companion. What is destruction? To leave jihad, to abandon pleasing Allah, in order for worldly gains. So this is what we are doing at the moment. When we do not believe, do good deeds, advise one another upon truth, and advise one another to be patient. When we refrain from jihad, when we refrain from enjoining what is virtuous and good, and forbidden, forbidding what is evil and vice, when we refrain from doing this, we are throwing ourselves into destruction. Why? Because we fail to understand the meaning of winning and losing. And I'll conclude with this final story that all of you know, even your children. Abdullah al Ghulam. Who is he? It's a long story. To make it short, a boy guided by Allah to give da'wah against the king who was claiming divinity and claiming to be the Lord of the people. The king tried to kill him. He sent him with a patch of his soldiers to throw him from a mountain. The mountain shook, they all fell and died. He came walking to the king. The king sent him with another group of soldiers to put him in a boat, take him to the middle of the ocean and throw him so that he would drown. The boat shook. They all fell and drowned, and the guy came walking. The king was helpless. So the boy told him, listen, you will not be able to kill me at all, unless you do what I tell you to do. So the king says, okay, what should I do? So the boy said, gather all the people of the village, the people of your kingdom, in this arena, and tie me to a pole, and take an arrow, of mine and put it in the bow and before shooting me say it verbally and loudly Bismillahi Rabbil Ghulam in the name of Allah the Lord of this boy you claim divinity you claim to be God and now you're saying this so this foolish king did exactly what the boy told him and the arrow fell where it was shot and the boy passed away. Is he a winner or a loser? Indeed, he's a winner. In our standards, the poor thing, he could have lived another 10 or 20 years. Then what? Then he'll die. But not as a martyr. Not with this impact and effect on the people. When the people saw this, they used to think that the king was their god. When they saw this, and they said, hmm, if the king says, Bismillah, then the Lord of this boy is our Lord. We believe in Allah. The whole kingdom accepted Islam on the spot. The king felt helpless again. His ill and evil advisors told him to dig trenches. 
fill it up with fuel and light it up. And whoever refuses to believe in him, they will put him in the fire and he will die and perish. The whole of the people refused to return back to their kufr and stead, steadfast and died only believing in Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the concept of winning in Islam. If you want to be a winner, you have to abide. You have no other alternative. You have to abide by the Quran and by the Sunnah. You have to call people to Islam, call them to goodness. You have to enjoin virtue and good and forbid vice and evil. You have to be patient because it will not come on a silver plate. You will be harassed. You will be abused because you are abiding by the Sunnah. We have to revive these masjids through prayers, through circles of knowledge, through Hifd al-Quran and memorizing the Quran. We have to support our brothers who are defending Islam in Palestine and elsewhere. Support them financially, support them physically, support them with dua. How many of us make dua every single night before Fajr in Tahajjud that Allah Azza wa Jal would grant our brothers who, committing, who are doing jihad to grant them victory? How many? If you say, Wallahi alhamdulillah, I do it once a year, you are a loser. If you say, I do it every night, but I still feel that I'm not doing enough, then inshallah, you are a winner. We have to open our eyes and see what Islam is and teach our children and our wives what the concept of winning and losing in Islam is. If we do this, maybe we will be among the winners, inshallah. Allahumma ghfir lana warhamna. وعافنا واعف عنا وتولنا برعايتك ولا تحرمنا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا وبلغ بما يرضيك آمالنا واختم اللهم بالباقيات الصالحات أعمالنا ربنا اجعل ثأرنا وكيدنا على من ظلمنا وعادانا وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين